Because sure. that's actually way cooler than I thought it was uh, going to yeah, be. Right? Yeah. Right? I mean, were you able to hear it? Hear it? Absolutely. Oh, that's... really? Oh, man. I'm really genuinely excited. All right. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to start from the top. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> It was like a literal like record scratch. Record like, scratch. let me tell you how we got here. <laughs> this episode of the Modern Rogue brought to you by Squarespace. Head on over to squarespace.com/rogue. Spell it right. R O G U E. Give it a free try. Get ten percent off with promo code Rogue. Ryer Appledorn. One of the strangest and most wonderful friends, a time traveling gentleman who created the biggest trophy I've ever seen that has me with a mullet on it. Your final form. I think. And strangely, yeah. <laughs> has fallen into our orbit despite the fact that apparently you don't watch any of my YouTube I've stuff. I've never seen any of it. You ever listen to Radiolab? Yeah. They did a whole podcast where the thesis was sound is touch at a distance. Mm -hmm. And it made the point that like when you talk, you know, your voice vibrates and then the air vibrates. And then in the case of LPs or something, that gets frozen in, in time. And then you put a needle on it and it vibrates and the air vibrates. And then the, the hairs inside uh, your ear, the hammer, the anvil, the stirrup, all of that stuff, like, like that's all touch. Right. And through that communication happens. Back in the before four times, <laughs> people would preserve sound waves on wax cylinders, tubes, basically. Right. <laughs> and they would stick a needle in them, the needle would vibrate, and sure enough, sound would come out. In fact, actually, uh, find me an old one in there. That's uh, 44. Uh, Oh, so we have to play it at a different speed. That would go at a different RPM, yeah. Also, you would have to play them at different <laughs> speeds. That's the reason that these are called LPs for long play, which meant they went really, really slow. Uh, is this even plugged here. in? Yeah, it's all good. There we go. Okay. We'll see. There it goes. Okay, what speed are we at? Uh, this is at 33, so... That's 45, which is pretty close. Can you even tell what instrument that is? Yeah, I can. They played this at my high school prom. No, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I was about to say, like, yeah, like they, unless you actually in, teleported in 1865, from 1965, yeah. they did, yeah. It was great. 1865. Uh, 1865. Middle of the Civil War. Yeah. What's that, gonna be like a... Maybe a violin, maybe a viola, some sort of string instrument. So those hisses and pops and cracks, those are actual imperfections in the grooves. The experiment is to kind of understand viscerally what is happening on this. So it's like if we take an actual needle from a sewing kit, right? This is straight up just something to repair your clothing. And I'll put it on this side, so it'll be near this microphone. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna kind of balance it. I feel it. Can you hear it? I can hear it jumping over something. I don't know if it's the scratches or if it's the actual. Okay, so I'll, I'll try putting a bit, a little yeah, bit of little pressure. Weight on it. So this is nothing but the needle. Is it is it is it staying in the groove or, or it's not? It's jumping around. I read somewhere once though that the shellac records have uh, larger valleys and, and 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 pits on them. Yeah. Uh, and so maybe we're getting too coarse of a vibration of the needle. So if we try a more modern record, we'll get a better. Result was a 78 or a 33, I can't remember. Okay, so if we're playing, whoop. <laughs> the chipmunks, they're back. <laughs> so slow it down to 33 RPM. <laughs> okay, okay. 
So we know so, that so, works. So, so we know what we're trying to hear. I believe you want to hold it like 45 degrees, there we go, along the, along the, the direction on there. Gotcha, there you go. gotcha. There we go. Is it jumping around or? It is jumping around, yeah. Okay, so, so you gotta keep it in that groove. You wanna uh, try it and see it? Yeah, sure. Because that's actually way cooler than I thought it was uh, gonna yeah, be. Right, <laughs> right? I mean, I mean, you could barely hear it. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna do it 45 degrees. The amount of pressure is tough to figure out. Is it holding? Yeah. Wow. No, I, I keep feeling it uh, uh, slipping over on you there. Got really far though. But, but he started it, singing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you able to hear it? Hear it? Absolutely. Oh That's, really? Oh yeah. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, did, did it sound like it was kind of warbling more on this side for some reason than it was on, or did it sound more? I mean, I'm certain. Of, number one, we've been testing on this one, so it's been uh, scratched all to, all to heck. Also, I don't know how good the needle is. Also, I don't know. I don't know that this is the right, <laughs> right way <angle. laughs> to, to do it. I know that um, back in the old days, you would hand crank them, so mm -hmm. a lot of the old, like, 1800s wax cylinders, you would, uh, as they try to restore them now, they have to compensate for the fact that they were hand cranked, and they uh -huh. would go... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think a lot of them, too, had, like, uh, like flywheels and stuff in them, right, to try and keep a constant RPM once you had it cranked up to speed. Let's try a version that has a little bit of... You picture the old-timey gramophones. Right. With, with the needle drop on there and the big right. horn on so there. It had a, had a diaphragm, the stylus would like amplify uh, uh, that. You guys put something together, right? They're over there. Yes, we did, Brian. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we started with a proof of concept by just sticking a needle in the bottom of the bottle and then moved on to refining it by cutting off the top and placing the needle through the cap. Okay, so in this case, <laughs> we have a push pin so now what I want to do is I want to figure out how to let it just kind of rest yeah. so that it, I don't mess it up on the groove. Whoa! <laughs> Here, let's try it, let's try it, let's try <laughs> yeah, it this yeah, way. Yeah, 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 You know what I think is happening is I think that the pressure that I'm putting down to keep it in the groove is slowing it down. Yeah. Maybe try actually speeding it up. Oh, okay, yeah, and, yeah. And, and I know we're gonna destroy this. this I think there's already a skip record. in there somewhere too. Yeah. All right, here we go. Yeah, I'm gonna drag over here. Nope, that was a bad idea. <laughs> I guess I guess we'll play at regular speed and try to get. We're like uh, accidentally <laughs> inventing vaporwave. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 we we made a bigger one, right? Uh, right? <laughs> yeah, we did. For this, we just used a plain plastic drinking cup, which is going to be a bit more firm than the plastic water bottle. So it's going to take a lot more effort to get the needle into it, especially through the bottom. I don't know the right way to do this, so just be careful. Ooh, hold on. For a section of highway. Yeah, that's satisfying. I used a broken pencil to push the needle through the rest of the way, and that seemed to work okay. A record groove. Look, we all have our own definitions of okay. But any day where somebody doesn't get hurt during a build is a good day. <laughs> okay. <Here we> go. <laughs> And it seems kind of silly that just like all you need is a bigger tube. I mean, it makes sense. That's why you do this when you want to hear someone better, right? That's true. <gasps> That's a big difference. Big jumps. Let you me point it towards. Oh me yeah, again? yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay, ready? 
Oh. That's like, I, I could almost rock to that, yeah, right? And the good, the good news is, <laughs> is, as amazing as that is, I don't think you're gonna be hitting any copyright strikes with something like that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out, we'll find out. But we made an even bigger one. Do we have an even bigger one? Yes, yes we, we do. do. Hey! <laughs> now they get it! <laughs> this one was really simple. It's just a sheet of paper that was wrapped into a cone or funnel shape and then taped closed. The needle should just barely be able to fit through the narrow end of the funnel. And for whatever reason, this ended up being the form that we experimented the most with in trying to simulate the stylus arm. Because one of the biggest problems we found while testing each of these methods was that you have to constantly apply inward pressure to keep the needle on the correct groove without skipping. So we tried a few different ways to mount the paper cone, but we never landed on a consensus for the best way. We created a cone, and this is closer to the version of um, the, that I first saw in like Mr. Wizard's World when I was a kid. I'm gonna pull this out and use these as the weight. And then I'm gonna push this down. Oh man. I'm really genuinely excited. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna start from the top. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was like a literal like record that scratch. Record like, scratch. let me tell you how we got here. <laughs> yep, that's me. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. All right. Oh, so he's going to jump back. Um, oh, so, so in this case, what we want is we want for it to want to go forward. So I'm going to twist this yeah. so it wants to go forward. Yeah. <laughs> that is totally wizard. <laughs> 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 that may so, have been that may have been us. <laughs> yeah, no. So, so in that case, we caused a a scratch in the groove where it just wants to follow it the wrong way. But we can get to. Oh, dang it! A little all over the map. A little bit. Okay, now this one we've totally mangled yeah. before, but let's 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 see if we can find something new. Yeah, you pick something. Don't let me know. And you pick the track. Oh, good you idea. You play good idea. DJ. Oh, no, damn it! Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Is this Fleetwood Mac? Yeah. Is this Rumors? It's the album, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no! Uh, oh, yeah. oh, okay, okay, okay. So, all right, let's 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 go one step farther. I had I had the dumb idea. Uh -huh. Call Ryer Appledorn.
Is this the Beatles? It's really scratched. Is that Tom Sawyer? Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, it's skipping. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. I'm just gonna say, do yourself a favor and stick needles in your music, man, right in the groove. The 80s would have sounded a lot different if this is as far as we ever got on record technology. If everybody was mainlining their music. <laughs> I'm amazed at how loud it really is just, just from the needle vibrating. Actually, yeah, let's go back to this. That's so much better. It's a lot better. All this technology was just screwing stuff up. That Edison cat knew what he was doing. <laughs> I keep skipping. Boo! <laughs> All right, well, thank you, Ryder. <laughs> okay, one last thing before we go. I wanted to give you a quick loudness comparison across each of these different methods because all of the audio that you've heard up to this point has been uh, modified for listening convenience and clarity, but this is just going to be straight out of our digital audio recorder. So the variation in loudness is going to be a lot closer to how we actually heard it in person. Now, all of this said, the comparison isn't controlling for variables, things like microphone placement and stuff like that. So th this is not a scientific comparison, but that's enough out of me. Give it a listen yourself. Brant, do you read a bunch of books? No. Like, <laughs> no? So, so you probably don't know uh, about Arnold Schwarzenegger's fourth act right now. No. By the way, this is a Squarespace ad. Squarespace.com slash rogue, spell it right, R-O-G-U-E. Give it a free trial, get 10% off. Okay, so act one, become Mr. Olympia. I would think act, act one would be being born. Okay, act two. <laughs> Go to Hollywood and, and become, you know, the action star that he is, right? The latest act, the one that's happening now, he wants to explain that no matter how bizarre your message is, you can get it out to the world. And I'm like, this dude is talking about Squarespace, right? And this is the part, Brand, that everything goes surreal okay. because he stops doing his motivational self-help book and instead speaks directly to my wife, Bonnie Brushwood. He says, I don't know what your thing is. Let's say your thing is pottery. Nobody can tell you no for making the pottery. Now maybe your spouse might need to help you with getting a kiln or buying the supplies to make the pottery. <laughs> And as I'm hearing this, I'm like, why is he suddenly giving a motivational talk to my wife, Bonnie, uh, as I look over at the actual kiln right now? And I'm like, is he about to do an ad for Squarespace? And in my mind, I imagine, let's say you want to get the word out about your incredible fusion of the physical earth material manifesting with living seed pods, and you want to explain it, but you don't want to learn HTML or CSS, then you should go to squarespace.com slash rogue. Give it a free try and get 10% off with this completely copyright free accent. <laughs> California. <laughs> Modern Rogue is supported in part by viewers like you at patreon.com slash modern rogue. In the description, you can find all of our credits and additional ways to support the show. Wait. Yo! That's, um, I know that song. What is it? Dream On. Yeah? Something like that.
Yeah. You want to try another one? Every time I look up at the bedrock. Hey. <laughs> Whoa. It's broken. It's a broken record, bro. <laughs> Turns out it's not a good gramophone.